And we're back. This is Travis. And I'm Ethan. Okay, so uh, the second half of the week of December 21st. Well, we're going to start out with the Justice League number four. With that great cover of Aquaman kicking the crap out of um, Green Lantern. Not, not, that I'm a huge, um, not that I'm a huge Aquaman fan per se. Even though I, he is kind of cool in this, isn't he? Oh, yeah. Um, I, I, I'm one of those horrible people that subscribes to the fact that Aquaman's really not that cool. Um, I keep hearing that his um, his um, own title, his solo title, is actually pretty good and whatnot. I may end up picking some of that up in trade just to see, but but you know it's Aquaman. Anyway, but uh, all, one of the things that Justice League confirms for me is I really really hate Hal Jordan. He is just he's just a jerk. He is just a complete jerk. He is somebody that I wouldn't spend any time with for nothing. Um, so, you know, obviously seeing him on the cover getting, looking like he's been beat up is pretty nice as far as I'm concerned. Um, I, I like this comic. I, I like where it's going. I like some of the introductions of some of the, some of the characters in it. Um, the cyborg thing is now going to start getting interesting, I think. Um, I love um, Wonder Woman's introduction last issue and her continuance in this, that this is a, a you know, a, a good fun fight. I mean, it's almost like she's stepped out of a D&D game. Hey, I've come to save your village and can't quite figure out exactly why the villagers don't want to be saved. Um, but anyway, um, I like Wonder Woman in it. Um, I'm, I'm liking Superman more and more in it. Um, he seems pretty practical. Um, Batman's a little arrogant. Um, uh, Hal Jordan's Green Lantern's way, way arrogant. Um, uh, Aquaman's introduction was great last time. You know, yeah. yeah, here I am, and this time he's pretty awesome. You know, what are yeah. you, what are you gonna do against all those guys? And Shark attack. Him calling up all those huge, great whites to eat everything. That was a, that was a cool, that was a cool shot, if nothing else. I mean, just seeing all the sharks leap up and snatch everything and whatnot, and then him skewer the last guy. Yeah. He's trying like, okay, okay, never mind. Never mind. Um, that, that you know, that that's pretty awesome. Um, you know, we get the basics of their personalities to some degree. You get the Flash, who's always trying to do the right thing to be the good guy, and he's concerned because, of course, the military's shooting at him, and Superman's saying they need to take out the military as much as the bad guys. The army really isn't going to like him after this. Right, right. His concern over that was is, is you know, kind of cool, too. Um, I have to admit, though, I, I mean, I love the fact they're going to be fighting against Darkseid. You know, he's like one of the ultimate villains and stuff. Better than Starro. That would have been boring, Starro. Yeah, because you know, it's always Starro. Yeah. Um, but I, I'm looking forward to this being done. I'm looking forward to the young, these young people being done. Um, I want to get an established team and, and get going. Yeah, I want to get to the present. Yeah, uh, because some of these characters, if they don't get better, I mean, I, man, I'm going to actively boycott Green Lantern Hal Jordan if, um, if, if this guy doesn't improve. I, he is, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, the one great thing is when he brushes up against Wonder Woman and gets attached to the last That was awesome. And, and spews that stuff out. Yeah. It's supposed to show how shallow the guy is. Yeah. I mean, they're shallow, and then there's... I have to be a good person so I can impress you, because yeah. that's mostly what I'm about. Explain to, me, explain to me again why he has the ring. I understand why there's, why there's two or three other... Um, why there end up being two or three other um, Green Lanterns from Earth that have the ring. Because obviously they don't have enough faith in Hal Jordan, yeah. right? That, that's, that's my opinion anyway. Um, you know, Art looks fine in this. Jim Lee, you know, always does a pretty decent job. Um, what did you think of it? Um, I liked it. I liked the story, and it is. It's awesome that they're fighting Darkseid because he's huge. Yeah. I mean, he's just gigantic. What did you think of the picture in there? We had to turn sideways to read it. They made me turn the picture sideways. Yeah. Yeah. How dare they? Yeah. I, I guess I don't mind that because that makes it that much bigger of a, of a, you know, of a, ooh, just how, you know, big he is now, but present is. But yeah, at the same time. I want to know, hey, anybody out there, are you reading this book digitally? How do they show you that digitally? I, I mean, I would really, really like to know. If you're reading this book digitally, how, how do they show you those panels? The panels where, um, where it shows, um, uh, dark side here. I'm gonna dig it out because I don't know. I can't remember. Did they give you page counts? There were lots of big spreads in this thing. This is the page as as we see it. Okay, in in the comic book. So you digital people, how 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 are you, how are you being how are you being shown this? 
Are you getting this panel like that and then getting that panel down at the bottom? H how is that show? I would really, really like to know because this is the kind of stuff that I always question how if, if comics are go all digital, how they gonna how they gonna show some of this stuff? Um, but there were lots of big action spreads, weren't they? Yeah. They're cool, but at the same time, that's telling you some story, right? But it, you're not telling a story. But I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's, it's interesting about um, Cyborg when he downloads the. Um, Goes on autopilot. And then and goes on the mother box. Yeah, stuff. yeah, and then he downloads the data for the and then mother he ends box. Up, and then he ends up teleporting with it. Yeah. So that's kind of interesting. So obviously that's going to be their ace in the hole to deal with the whole thing, probably, right? Is the fact is that he's got that information now. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be my thought. Yeah. Anyway, I interrupted you on that. What'd you think of it? Um, like I said, I liked it. It was um, cool. I like Aquaman's um, entrance and display of powers that was really awesome. Yeah. And even though I had to turn it sideways, it was still really cool and Dark Side showed up because sure. it was just kind of like, well, crap. Yeah. Yeah, when he's standing <laughs> right there. Yeah. And then, the, and then the, of course, then the next page is a double spread of him basically, boom, yeah. some yeah, energy. Yeah, cool. And everybody flying off. Yeah. And you're like, oh, crap. Yeah. You know? So it'll be interesting to see how these guys put themselves together since so they're not really a team to see how they're yeah. going to figure things out. I mean, it's going to be pretty easy for the heavy hitters. They're just going to be heavy hitters, right? Yeah. Beyond that, it'll be interesting to see exactly yeah. what happens. How does Batman fight Dark yeah. Side? Yeah. Um, for me, I rate this thing about a three and a half. Yeah, I'd go with that too. I mean, uh, um, like I said, I'm enjoying this. It's kind of interesting. I don't think it's fabulous, fabulous. Um, I'm really curious to see once they get done with the first, the first arc and... Um, go about being the league as opposed to a bunch of people that are just kind of gathered together. Yeah. But anyway, so on to the next one. Nightwing, issue four. Um, yeah, uh, I don't know. I don't, I'm not, I don't dislike this issue, but I don't really like it that much either. It was okay, I guess. But it just wasn't that attention capturing to me. So it was kind of boring? Yeah, it was kind of boring. Just kind of there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, one of the things I immediately noticed was when I opened up and started reading it is, hey, this isn't the same artist we've had. Yeah. Yeah. Well, not that he was a bad artist, but, but the other artist, um, um, Barros, I want to say. I can't remember off hand. Much more dynamic than what, than, what, than what this is. Not that this was bad, but um, yeah. Um... Yeah, you know, it took a lot, it took, it was a lot of blah, blah, blah just to get to the end of it and have him find the box that's got his name in it with a whole bunch of other people's names in it, wasn't it? Yeah. I mean, I, I guess on a personal level, his life gets marginally complicated with the whole, um, um, you know, the old girlfriend from the circus and Barbara, you know, there's that level of complication potentially in his life and whatnot. Yeah. Um, it felt very, um, some of the things I thought about it was with Batgirl being there is um, with now it was in Batgirl that they had their kind of last month they had their kind of fight between yeah. the two of them. Yeah. Did it felt like this was just kind of it kind of got glossed over here, didn't it? Yeah. It, it seemed too easy for us to show up and go, oh hey, hi, how's it going? Yeah. After they basically, you know, kind of cussed at each other. Yeah. So. That part seemed a little, obviously written by two different people, have different views on things. Yeah. And kind of my opinion. The other thing I didn't really care for, did she not seem way too happy-go-lucky in this? Yeah. She seemed like a shadow of Stephanie Brown back yeah. girl, right? Yeah. Yeah, just too too quick with a quip and a, and a joke and a whatnot. Granted, it was, for me, it was nice that she wasn't worried about getting beat up by something or whatever, like she has in her own title. Yeah. But that's a completely different other thing. But so, so there was some things about it that just kind of went, okay, this doesn't... Obviously, this Batgirl's written by somebody besides the other, you know, besides Gail Simone, who's writing, currently writing Barbara, and so she didn't feel the same. Whereas in, when she's in Birds of Prey, there really wasn't enough of her in Birds of Prey saying enough stuff for her to seem inconsistent, right? Whereas yeah. in this title, she felt... She felt more like Stephanie, yeah. didn't she? She yeah. really did. She really yeah. she felt more like the, you know, kind of happy-go-lucky, freewheeling, you know, go-with-the-flow kind of person yeah. that Stephanie is. So, um, 
Yeah, I wasn't really enraptured with this thing. I mean, I'm curious about the whole, the whole overlying plot, but it didn't really feel like a whole lot happened in this one. You're right. Yeah. That, that's how it was for me. I was like, okay, so they fought a, a shape-shifting dude. That all didn't really need to be there to further to further the actual Nightwing plot. This almost felt like a a okay. We need to stretch the story out. Or yeah, we, it's or like we a need, filler. Yeah, I mean, it still had to do. It still had to do with the storyline, but most of it had nothing to do with the storyline, really. Yeah. So I don't know. I Maybe mean, it was surprised. Maybe somehow that all come back to it. Why not? But yeah, I wasn't really. Um, it was yeah. It was just there. Yeah, I give it a two. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for me it's average. Average for me means it's a three. It's a weak three, but it's a three. Mm. Anyway, so on to the next one. The next one we're going to talk about is Red Hood and the Outlaws number four. This gosh darn comic. I tell <laughs> you, I, you get the first issue and I'm like, oh man, you know, this is, um, I'm not getting this. You know, with the dumb, you know, yeah. breast um, jokes that are in it throughout the whole thing. And, yeah. And how... Um, vacant uh, Starfire seemed and whatnot in those first issues. Uh, the only thing that was interesting to me was is um, I like the artist's style. He just got enough different style from everybody else that that makes him it makes it interesting as far as that goes. But every issue they've consistently added a little more to it and a little more to it to make me care about oh, everybody. Even development. Yeah, even even Roy yeah. in this one who has been I mean like the Scooby Doo of the DC universe and the Shaggy of the DC universe in this issue, he's actually starting to really... He seems like he has a little more character. Yeah. You know, you know I mean... You know, he's, I think he's still kind of the, the doofus of the group. Uh, I think that's just the role he's going to play, you know, to some degree. But, yeah, I actually, did, I actually... He was okay in this one. He was okay in this one. He didn't say much stuff to me. He just go, oh, my God, I can't stand it. Um, and the story's getting interesting. Yeah. Um, so... Yeah, this was the this was the last issue. Number four was the last issue that I was committed to in advance in advance ordering of, of the book, um, but I've I've kept ordering it um, just because it, it keeps putting stuff in there that's just enough interesting to make me go yeah. mm, wow. Um, you know, this one you know has two plots going on now. Obviously, Starfire's got issues going on with this. Yeah, this guy he's a human that's uh, altered himself with alien DNA yeah. to make him some you know gnarly lizard you know badass. So basically, to kill. He's, Aliens. Right, right. How does um, that work? So, you know, that's all interesting. And then there's the other plot with the people who supposedly wiped out um, Jason's old teachers and whatnot. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, this comic's interesting. Like I said, everybody has just enough, enough, enough worthiness. That it makes it interesting. One of the things I thought was really interesting is when Starfire's getting the crap kicked out of her. She certainly does in this, you know. Uh -huh. Is is what does she say as she's going down? Do you remember? She starts talking to Tamaranian. Well, but at one point though, is um, when she's really got the crap beat out of her, and she says, "Richard." Yeah. That's Dick. That's yeah. Dick Grayson, who supposedly she can't remember. You remember then the like the issue one or two? They basically say, "Oh, she doesn't." She sees us all as the same, and she doesn't remember anything, whatever. Yeah. Obviously, she does. Uh huh. So, that's interesting. That's interesting. That whole yeah. that I, I am curious to see if we get played on that more and more and whatnot. So obviously, the guy meant more, you know, in this. And I don't know if that's the writer. I don't think it's the writer caving to the massive pressure from the fan base, going, "Oh, I can't believe you, you know, <laughs> you destroyed this woman so much." Um, or this is stuff just part of the stuff that 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 us as the reader has to be patient to see. Yeah. Um, but I thought that was really interesting that, that, that um, you know, in the old DC universe, you know, um, Dick was a pretty significant person in her life. And, um, you know, they're gonna, it looks like they're going to use it here too. That, that still is the case. So oh, I thought that was an interesting part. What yeah, I that? liked it. I like this a lot more than the first one. It just keeps getting better every issue. It's not anything absolutely amazing. But it's not bad. And I like the characters, including Crux. And so what do you think of the end when he um, tells Starfire, welcome to humanity? Oh, because he hit her with, um, with, a, with a device that takes her powers away. Yeah, that was... Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, I think... Sure. I, I'm trying to remember. It almost seems like... And, I, and I'm sure somebody out there will potentially correct me. Um, it almost seems like that 
that that device has been around before in the DC universe, and it's been used. Like in the Teen Titans, it was yeah. used to neutralize to neutralize her once before. It it seems like or something along along those lines. Um, so yeah, she's suddenly powerless now, fighting Crux. So yeah. she's screwed if if um, Roy doesn't get there in time. Yeah, um, and then I like I liked um, Red Hood's story too, mm -hmm. except for after he pulls out just. He's, he pulled a Damien. He just, like, whoa, bang. <laughs> pull, two pull two big crowbars. copper swords yeah. out. Yeah, yeah. Pulls, <laughs> pulled the pull crowbars out from underneath his cape kind yeah. of thing. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Except for the fact that they seemed a little out of proportion for to boots. me. Because, well, yeah, because he has these two big swords. And then when he's pulling them out and then when he's dashing out to go fight her mm -hmm. and he still has them held backwards, they look more like daggers. But then the final panel, like, he's getting ready to fight her. And they look more like two big copper swords compared to like the more lethal looking copper daggers that he was pulling out of his boots. Okay, I guess I didn't notice that much. The fact that there was that, that there was that much difference. To, I'm, I'm gonna look at the book right now. I mean, cause see, look, there they're like smaller dagger-like things, and then. Okay, so so when he when he when he drops his drops his guns, and see, he actually shows him actually shows him shows him pulling them out. Yeah, I don't think they can see that. Actually, yeah. shows him pulling them out of it, out of a sheath in his boot. And they look. So you're right. So they can't. Dead. So they can't be any longer than the full length of his shin, which is what it looks like. And then right there, yeah, they 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 grew another two or three inches. Yeah, yeah. They're magic copper daggers. Oh, okay. See, look. And that's, then and then yes. And then and then here they look more like scimitars. Yeah. Don't they? They look yeah. more like. Yeah, they're way longer than his than his shin there, uh -huh. especially that one. Yeah. So either the artist messed up, or um, <laughs> they're really shiny though. Yeah. And sparkly. Uh huh. How do you know they're not magic? See all the weird stuff that's bouncing off of them? Yeah. Maybe they're magic daggers. Maybe they are. I'm going with their magic. Okay. Daggers. Because if they're not, they're seriously <laughs> messed up daggers. Still cool though. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean, okay I'm gonna fight this person. She doesn't. Um, she doesn't hurt by steel. Only copper. Yeah, but um, bullets. Yeah. Are c coated in what? Copper. Yeah, most <laughs> most of the time. So, and you think you think that if he knew he was going up against something that was um, that was um, had a weakness to copper, he would yeah. just load his guns up with. Let's fight with, it hand to hand. With all, well, you know, he is he is Red Hood. Good He's point. crazy. So I mean, I guess mean, is the other reason why. And she's partially messed up anyway. I mean, Roy split her face in half. Yeah. That was pretty cool. Where you yeah. shoot that that fragmentation arrow with all those little arrows stuck yeah. in her head, and she's turning around going, "You know, you dummy, that doesn't hurt." And he goes, "Yeah, I know," and hits her with that big cool. wide splayed thing. Yeah. So I do like his arrows and stuff too. Yeah, it was fun. It was fun, and there was a lot less juvenile humor in it. That's, yes. That was great for me because the two of them, you know. Acting like drinking buddies and being juvenile is, yeah. I, don't, I don't care to read that. And we moved away from that. So, anyway, well, that's fun. Mm -hmm. Next, we have Supergirl number four. Eh. I was, this issue was only okay for me. It was boring. I, there, it didn't feel like there was anything interesting in it except for the very end where the big boss guy is all blown up but he has supergirl dna and it looks like he has brain oh they it looks like they spliced his um spliced his body with that brain creature yeah yeah because his body's so destroyed that they mm -hmm. kind of transplanted what was left of him into the end of the thing yeah i mean otherwise it was not very interesting for me eh. <laughs> As I see i kind of liked it um i kind of liked it for the fact is is that obviously she still doesn't speak English or anything like that, so she has no idea what's going on. It's like she can have any real long conversation with anybody uh, about things. She's trying to figure stuff out. I thought where she gets saved by the guy that basically she decided not to crush a couple issues ago, and like issue one, I think. Um, how he helps her out, you know, and she initially thinks that he's you know going to finish her off, and then re she realizes that he's going to help him out, and then she ends up dying and whatnot. Um, I don't know. I, I mean, yeah, it wasn't super exciting, but I like this. Her f slowly figuring out, trying to figure out how everything works as best that she can. Um, I like the fact that um, um, she's now potentially decided that maybe all humans aren't bad news. And because I think up to this point, that's pretty much what, what her opinion would be is, is they're all, you know, they're all, you know, scum. I, I like, 
I like this villain. I, I didn't like him as Trial, though I was pretty concerned last issue. He really seemed to just be a, um, a Lex Luthor wannabe. Yeah. And he still is to some degree, but obviously there's going to be a lot different about him now. I mean, with his body being replaced, now he's going to be, you know, some superpower dude, not just, um, you know. And obviously the guy's obsessed and a psycho when he's, I mean, there's hardly anything left of him. And, and, and he thinks he's won because he got some blood of hers. Yeah. So that, that can be interesting, and, and it'll be curious to see where that, where that goes for me. Um, yeah, this, I, I, yeah, I don't know. Ah, I'd probably keep collecting this comic. Um, but um, um, we have another family member who likes the book and is reading the book, so I'm going to keep getting it because, you know, because of that, because, um, you know, my daughter and Ethan's sister is, is reading it and she enjoys it, so I'll keep picking it up for that. It's not a bag comic. I like I like the art. I think the art is, is, is great. Um, I think that he does a very good job of, um, of, of drawing a, a, teenage, a teenage girl. Um, and so, yeah, I, 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 you know, I think this is going to be interesting. It's less of a, it's not a superhero comic right now. No. Nope. So much as it's a, um, you know, sci-fi, her trying to figure out where she's at in the world and how she's going to function and whatnot. And so I'm, I'm, I'm curious to see what comes next now. You know, she's figured out how to pretty much use her powers. I mean, she doesn't have total control over them, but obviously a lot better control over them than she did to start out with. Um, you know, so what's she gonna do? She's got that busted up crystal. She doesn't really want to go back and talk to, and talk to Superman because she doesn't really 100% trust Superman. You know, and she's not. I mean, is she gonna try flying back to home? I guess. <laughs> yeah. So, so it's gonna be interesting. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm coming to it. I'm not riveted. I'm not riveted. Uh, but for me, it's one of those comics. It's a three. It's enjoyable. There's nothing, in my opinion, nothing bad about the comic. Uh, there's nothing that just that has me riveted to my seat, and I just can't wait for next month. Oh my gosh, what's gonna happen? Um, but it doesn't have anything that makes me roll my eyes and go, oh, you got to be kidding me. This was crap. I give it a two. Yeah. Okay. It was boring. Okay. You thought it was boring. That's fine. Okay, last issue of this week is Wonder Woman number four. I like Wonder Woman. This this comic just rocks. Yeah. It's, it's another one of those things that, um, um, uh, boy, this is cool. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I... You know, a lot, you know, a good chunk of that, I think, is Cliff Chang. I love his art style in the book. I love the way he, he portrays people and whatnot. I, I like how they're delivering um, this this new Wonder Woman. You know, she just found out that her her entire creation story is totally bonk. Yeah. And, and, <laughs> and, and whatnot. And so she, you know, takes off, leaves Paradise Island, pissed. She goes back to England. Was, I, um, it seems to be that's like maybe yeah, her England. home. That's her home where she lives at away from Paradise Island is mm -hmm. England, which I think is cool. I think that's, yeah, that's an interesting, um, you know, place for her to be at and whatnot, a little bit different setting and stuff. And, and what does she do to um, blow off steam? She goes to some raunchy rock and roll concert kind of thing. Yeah. That, to me, that's just cool. You know, I guess, you know, like as me and you were talking about earlier, I wouldn't want to be in a mosh pit with that woman. But, no. um, but yeah, yeah. Um, I thought that was I thought that was great. Uh, that was pretty cool. Um, I, I think that um, uh, the the story they tell about her with just the rest of them sitting at the bar, you know, the conversation with Strife and whatnot, who is an interesting character too. She's gonna be interesting um, <laughs> uh, villain of sorts in the fact that she's gonna cause problems um, because that's, of course she's Strife. Yeah. Right. Uh huh. Um, that that's all. You, that's all really interesting. I love the scene where um, they come and I'm, I'm getting their pound of flesh for Hera. And it's like instantly, as soon as, as, soon as Strife touches um, what's her name's belly, you know, where the baby's at, yeah. suddenly Four. Wonder Woman's there. I mean, just yeah. like, I mean, last time we saw her, she was out in the middle of the floor. Yeah. But somehow she's just bang right there. Do not screw with this person. Yeah. I'm here to protect this person. Stand Strife. All right. Jams the, with the, with the glass. champagne glass through the back of the hand. Yeah. You're not screwing with this, the, you know. Yeah. That was cool. Yeah, don't mess with Wonder Woman. That's cool. And then, of course, all of the bad stuff that's happening on Paradise, Paradise Island. Island. So, so is there a debate on what happened on Paradise Island? A little. You, so you think there's a Medusa involved but with it? I don't, I don't know, though, because uh, I'm not sure. <laughs> See, I just think what happened was, is, you know, Hera, I think it's Hera that turned her into a, a statue right. and turned the rest of the paradise, all those other women who are protecting this horrible woman that slept with, Zeus. with slept with Zeus, um, turned them all into snakes, because yeah. that's her opinion of them, they're all a bunch of snakes and whatnot. Mm -hmm. 
So, and I loved Wonder Woman's thing at the end there, where she basically says, you know, look, all my life I've wanted to actually be blood kin to you, and I find out that I really am, I get my wish, that I want to be blood kin to you, and how do I act? I act like an idiot, and now look what's happened. Yeah. You know? But, I love the jealousy of gods, but at the same time, it makes no sense to me. Did she know she was sleeping with Zeus? Yeah, probably. Did, did she? See, I wasn't sure if she knew she was sleeping with Zeus, or if he was just some warrior that, that fought as well as her or whatever. I need to go back and look, because I can't remember her saying that she knew until after the fact that she had slept with Zeus. I don't know. <laughs> so, so was she really being treacherous? I mean, is it treacherous to some person in disguise comes and does something, you do something with them, and you find out afterwards that they were your, your best friend's mortal enemy? Does that make you a traitor to your best friend because you didn't know that they were... Your best friend's mortal enemy? No. Right. So I'm thinking, damn, this woman's harsh. Yeah. I guess she didn't kill her, though. But I'll be curious. Uh, now I'm... Well, okay. Turn a stone... Turn a stone in mythological world does not mean you're dead. Okay. So you tell me about all those stories where all the people that get turned to stone get turned back into normal people. <laughs> um, I'll get back to you on that. Yeah. At any rate, um, I think it's really interesting. I'm, now I really want to oh, yeah. know what's going to happen and whatnot. I think this is... A, a very cool comic. And then there's then there's war and yeah. um, Apollo, right? And Apollo, well. yeah. So Apollo thinks dad is gone and he's going to vie for position. Yeah. He's going to vie to be the new Lord leader of, of the heavens. gods. Yeah. That was cool. I like Paul, Apollo. I like the way he... I, yeah. Actually, I like all of the gods. Yeah. The way the gods Whether are being portrayed. portrayed. Yeah. I really think war is really interesting here because war, in the old books, he was always this kind of extremely arrogant, yeah, I want it all, I'm going to kick all your butts, blah, blah. Whereas here, he's just this kind of, he's just this force that's always moving forward. You know, and it's like, I, you know, and Apollo's like, you sure you're not going to mess with me? And he's like, look around. I mean, the one thing that's just a, a given is there's always going to be war. Yeah. So I'm always going to be here. I love, in fact, he's got these hollowed out eyes. Yeah. You know, it's not like his eyes are black. I mean, they just look like he doesn't have eyeballs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. I, I, the, this new versions of the gods and whatnot that um, Brian Orlesio is, is doing is really cool. Yeah. It's really an interesting comic. Mm -hmm. And I love, I love um, Queen Hepatelia's confrontation with Hera. Mm -hmm. I like that a lot. That is a huge axe. Yes. That is a huge axe. Yes, that is a very big axe. Yes. That's a really big axe. Yeah. Pays to be an Amazon, I guess, huh? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but pretty awesome. Yeah. Pretty awesome. Uh, it's a, outstanding book. It's an it's mm -hmm. it's an one of those books that that's come out of the out of the um out of the relaunch and is just is golden. Yeah. Um, definitely. I know that coming up here pretty soon, Cliff Chang's gonna take take a couple issues off, um, take a break, um, but you know I know he's gonna be back on it, and, as far as art goes and stuff, but yeah. Um, this book's a four for me. Uh, I give it a four too. Yeah, it's it's a great book. Anyway, um, do we have a, a pick of the week? A pick of the week? Hey, um, what book do you think's the best book of the week? Best book of Wonder Woman. Yeah, same yeah. here. <laughs> same here. For me, it's Wonder Woman fall right behind uh, with Batman, but definitely yeah. Wonder Woman uh, firing on all cylinders. It's a, it's a great book. Anyway, that's it for this week. Yep. And uh, I guess we'll uh, probably see you in a week. Um, we've got our weeks worth of comic books sitting at the house that need to be read, uh, but when we'll get to video, usually it's the weekends, it's the easiest time for us to do that, so. Anyway, have a good one, and then, like I said, um, the last one, leave some comments, uh, leave some comments on the Justice League thing. Anybody out there who's yeah. reading this thing digitally, I'm just dying to know how is that presented, okay? Either that or I'm gonna have to go on Twitter and beg people on Twitter to have someone tell me there. I'm sure somebody will, but it'd be great to get in the comments, too. Anyway, have a good one.